Hey everyone, Dusty here, and today I'm going to be reviewing my race bike, the Cannondale Slice, and just my overall thoughts on it for those of you looking to get a new tri bike, and especially for those of you who are maybe thinking about getting a Cannondale Slice for yourself. So I guess first up, a little bit of history on my bike. I bought my 2016 Cannondale Slice in June of 2016, so I've had it for just over a year now. And the reason I picked up the Slice was because I was having some issues that were able to be fixed with warranty on my old bike, but I was going to have to be without a bike for one to two months right in the middle of my season last year. So that wasn't going to work, so I had to go out and buy another bike immediately so that I could keep training and get through my race season. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go the used bike route, so I went to my local bike shop and they only had two different models of triathlon bikes, one being the Trek Speed Concept and the other being my Cannondale Slice. I definitely wasn't willing to spend six plus thousand dollars on the Trek Speed Concept at the time, so my only other option was the Cannondale Slice and I bought the 105 version, so that means all the components are Shimano 105. And for me, in Canadian, that cost me just under $3,000. I think American, it's just under $2,000. So for a brand new triathlon bike, that's probably the, one of the cheapest out there, at least for a major brand. I wasn't super excited at first, obviously, because it was a very last minute decision and I couldn't put in that much research into the bike because I, I just needed one and I was only left with two options at my bike shop. And after finding out how much Trek Speed Concepts are, this was my only option. And as you can tell, there isn't a lot of surface area on this bike when you compare it to, you know, the high-end $15,000 bikes that are, you know, that have super deep down tubes that, that come out to here and you know triathlon bike companies the big thing right now is aero is everything and you know the crazier looking the bike the faster that they want you to think that you're going to go but after a few rides on my slice I realized it was a great bike and any hesitations I had about it before were just silly at the end of the day it just might not look as cool as some of those super bikes but you have to remember, it comes down to the engine that's sitting on the bike. No. Alright, so let's get into my bike and some of the things that I like about it. I should say though, the first thing is if you're switching from one tri bike to another and you're quite comfortable on your current tri bike, just remember that on every bike there's always three points of contact and if you can replicate that on one bike to another, more than likely you'll be quite comfortable or as comfortable as you were on the previous bike. And those three points of contact are the seat, the pedals, and the handlebars or aero bars. So the things that I switched from my old bike to my current bike, the Slice, was my saddle. So this is the saddle that I've been riding for about seven or eight years. And it's a really light specialized saddle. It came on my very first tri bike, the Specialized Transition. And I just always found it really comfortable, so I've switched it amongst all of my seats, and I'll probably never have to switch saddles because I've always had a lot of luck with that specialized saddle. Sometimes stock saddles can work out for people, and sometimes they won't. I didn't even bother sitting on the stock saddle that came with the Cannondale. I'm not even sure what saddle it was, but um, it might work out for you, it might not. Um, if it doesn't, a saddle is a fairly inexpensive but important thing that you need to figure out what works for you. The other point of contact are the handlebars and and I took my Zip VUCA Bull handlebars off my old bike to put on to the Slice. I just really like these handlebars. These came on my last bike. I just find them super comfortable. They're a lot more adjustable than the ones that originally came on the Slice. I'll probably always run with these handlebars or at least something similar. So I do have my old bike here. I just wanted to show you this is the stock seat that came with the Cannondale. Uh, I think it's just a Cannondale seat. I'm not sure model or anything like that. And then these are the bars that came stock with the Slice. So they're vision bars 
not quite as adjustable or comfortable in my, my opinion as the zip bars, but still not a bad handlebar. They come too long for, I would say, almost anyone, but that's easy. You can just take it to your bike shop and they'll cut down the arrow bars to match it down to the length that you want. And then the third and last point of contact are the pedals and I've been running the Garmin power pedals for I think four or five years. I picked up a pair right when they were first released from Garmin and I really like them. Alright, brakes out in the front there. The brakes aren't really hidden like in some of the super bikes. The rear brakes are just down here at the back. So like I said, this 11 speed Cannondale Slice um, was the 105 version so the kind of on the low end as far as components go it did come with an FSA crank and no it doesn't come with the zips those are my race wheels these are the wheels that come stock with the 105 slice definitely a heavier wheel but honestly I could care less because these wheels are training wheels only and when it's race day and time to go fast, these wheels will not be on the bike. So at the end of the day, I think that the Slice is an amazing value. I have the 105 version, which is the least expensive, and to go up one more to the Uptaker version isn't that much more, and you get a nicer set of radials. And then to go up one step further, you're getting the Altegra Di2, so the electronic shifting and to go from Altegra to Altegra Di2 isn't that big of a jump in price either. So yes, this bike might not look like some of the crazy high-end bikes that look super space age and have electronic shifting and hidden storage compartments and hidden brakes, but this bike is super adjustable. It's very, very light. It's really easy to travel with. And if you eventually want anything like electronic shifting or some nicer components or race wheels, you can just add that stuff on later. And usually you can find it at a discounted price if you wait and look hard enough for it. And I just like how the bike feels. I've only had three triathlon bikes in my career and I haven't noticed a huge difference moving from bike to bike, mostly because I've always kept the seat and handlebars the same. But with that being said, this this bike doesn't have a lot of surface area compared to those higher end bikes so things like the crosswind hitting the bike is not is almost a non-factor because there's a lot less surface area. To, but all in all I'm really happy with my purchase of the Cannondale Slice. Like I said in the start of the video it was literally one of two options that I had in choosing my bikes at least at my local bike store. And the other option was the Trek Speed Concept, which is a great bike, but it was, I think, six or seven thousand dollars at least. So buying this bike at half the price was kind of a no-brainer, considering I was just going to be getting my old bike back in a couple of months. So if you have any questions about the bike and something that I left out in my review, just comment down below and I'll get back to you. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe for more everything running triathlon and nutrition related.